Um, I'm just going to start off. I'm going to talk about the three guys that we signed letter of intents to. Um, I don't know if this is the right way. It's kind of like you know your wife's going to have a baby and – you know, he had those guys committed for a really long time and he got a due date. So this is kind of the day they sign and become family members. And it's like newborn kids that you have in your family. So, um, you know, Dane's committed a long time ago um, and Jordan also did. And then Anthony was a quick uh, commitment also just because we started recruiting. But really excited about these three guys. I think they're really good players, uh, not only good players, but I think they're really good people. And that's what our program's about. So, you know, Dane's going to be a heck of a wing player, a guard player here. He's six seven, very athletic, can shoot it. Um, number one player in Arizona by all accounts. And, um, you know, just been part of this whole Lobo program for a long time. Mom and dad have been awesome. Um, so he kind of knows what it's about. He's He's been here. He was team camp when he's an eighth grader, so he's – experienced all this for a really long time and it's always it's always good to get those guys on the dotted line um and then jordan's a kid out of houston uh point guard you can play him all over the floor because of his athletic ability uh he can shoot it from deep he can guard he can push the ball uh really exciting player very fortunate to have him a little bit uh like jamal but bigger um and i i think he can do some things that's really going to be helpful to us next year um but terrific family mom and dad have been really good in the whole process and um you know he's just a guard that's going to help us down the road and then anthony uh from oregon we've been recruiting him for a little bit little little time and um you know had a great conversation with him and like after one phone conversation he committed so uh he knows all about our program uh he plays at a great school at west lynn uh, he plays with another really good guard, highly highly touted guard, and um, just really fortunate to have him. He can really score it. He's a combo guard, can play the one, can play the two. But you know we're going to need his shooting, his scoring, and just a great kid. He's you know his his whole um, circle up there is are really good people, and his you know mom was down here on his visit, so you know it's it's been good. It's been a good day for us um, with recruiting. Um, the only thing I can say is I I, don't, I think we're done, but you just never know in this this day and age. So we'll continue to keep recruiting. Uh, very fortunate that I think this class has helped us secure something for uh, somebody in 16 already. So we got a good start to that class, and we'll continue to try to get that pushed along a little bit farther. Um, on to the game, um, you know, got a lot of respect for their coach at Idaho State. Uh, he was an assistant at Montana. He's been a longtime college coach. He's, you know, he's well respected. He was an assistant at Montana when we played them in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they're they're very unique because they're going to zone us. They play a lot of matchup zone, kind of like Air Force. Uh, it's a unique zone, so you know we'll have to shoot the ball better. We'll work on that today. We've been working on that, so spending a lot of time shooting the ball. But they'll they'll give us some uh, definite definite. Uh, challenges as far as they play zone the whole game. Now, they might play man, but they've always been a zone team. And um, so I can see that happening. They have a lot of new guys like we do. So um, they lost some veteran guys from their team last year. They got some young guys that they had sitting out, and they also redshirted some kids. So um, they got an Australian point guard that's a good player. Um, and they got an uh, undersized inside player that's pretty good and a tall uh, kid in the middle. So – you know, they're, they're going to give us a really good challenge. I know they're going to come in here and try to win, and our guys just got to continue. It's the first game. So there's going to be some jitter, some anxiousness because uh, it counts. And, you know, we've had some injuries. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think Cullen, Cullen's 50-50 for the game. He's got a hurt heel, so I, that that's going to hurt us a little bit if he doesn't play. Um, um, and then Jordan has had – two practices this will be his third in a row um so hopefully he'll continue to improve uh he's made strides he's worked at it um so you know i don't think he'll play friday i would say doubtful um but hopefully he can get through these next two practices without any issues he's worked really hard to get back and um you know he's practiced well um but that's about that's the injury update uh, that's the only injury update i have Do you do that? How do you 
Well, I think you got to run plays for him earlier, you know, and get him involved that way. Last year, he's able to play off all those other guys, but um, I think a lot of it is he's putting a lot of pressure on himself. You know, he's a senior. I mean, you start seeing it. You know, you come around that. You know, it's the final lap of a auto race like the Indy 500, and you go lap one, lap two, lap three, and you're coming around that last corner, and you know, it, it's it kind of hits some of those guys in a different way. But you know, I think he's okay. I think he'll be all right. I think he's practiced terrific. I think he's done everything he can to to get out of it. Uh, he's worked on his game, but you know, it's you're talking about also two games that we really didn't do anything that we've that we practice. So it's it's basically, I wouldn't say organized pickup game, but it, to us, you know, I, I I do that purposely, and. You know, sometimes guys get caught in a rut and they're trying to just do basic stuff and it's it's not conducive to being successful and hopefully he'll come out of it. But he's going to rebound the ball, he's going to play hard, he's going to guard, he's going to give you everything he has, so I think he'll be fine. No, it's it's live now. I mean, it'll be it'll be everything we have. I mean, they'll see, they'll see it all. So whatever we have to do to win, whatever we have to do defensively to win, whatever we have to do offensively to win, um, we've got most of it in. And, you know, we'll use whatever we have to do to win, and that starts on Friday. Was Cole's heel something that was bothering him in the game? Or did it just I think it's been a long process. Um, you know, I don't know how long it's been bothering him. He, did, he usually doesn't. He's had so – you know, what he had to deal with last year and – and I just think he just – anything that he has ag nagging or he just doesn't talk about it just because of what he went through last year. I think he's – as much pain as he went through last year with being sick and how, how sick he was, I think anything that's nagging or anything that's um, – he thinks he can play with, he really doesn't talk about. But he couldn't practice. So, you know, and I don't know if he'll practice today. But it was something that – I think I think it's been bothering him. He just won't – he's not going to tell me when, Jeff. I, I, don't, I don't know what – but I just know he couldn't practice yesterday, and I don't know if he's going to practice today. Could you mention something uh, on the radio about Obach? Uh, can you share what's going on? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not anything that's going on. I just, I just, you know, people talk about these kids, and you know, I, you know, and I didn't mean to stir anything up. I was just telling you how I felt. I wasn't trying to. It wasn't that thing. I said they were great articles, which they were. But there's always a there was a negative thing that bothers me because I I protect my kids. I got I got 18, 19, 20 year old kids. I got a kid that's never been home for eight years, and he's in his family's in a civil war. He went to you know he's born in the north. Now he's in the south. It's it's if he would go home to try to get a passport, I'd have to worry about him coming back. And that's stuff that we don't think about with kids that are dealing with things other that's more important. Life's a hell of a lot more important than winning and losing a basketball game. And we don't really think about what this kid's going through. And I think about it because I care about him. I love him like he's my son. But it's like I was talking to him yesterday in film. I said, you don't mind me talking about that, do you? And he, he said, no. I said, because how long has it been since you've been home? He says, it's been since my freshman year in high school since he came over here. So that's a long time to go without. I mean, he's had family members die that he can't go to a funeral. I mean, that's that's weighing on a kid that's that age. I mean, I mean I've mean, i had family members die. I've been able to get to the funeral. I can't even imagine if I couldn't get to – I can't even go home. I've never been able to go home. So that's all I was talking about as far as, you know, doing the radio thing the other night, talking about him is that – you know, we criticize and we do some things with these young men that there's a lot of other things that are going on in their lives than just playing a basketball game. Did you not look at uh, bigs in recruiting because Obach is so young? I didn't look at bigs because I thought Alex Kirk was coming back. I mean, nobody wants to talk about that. I mean, if I have Alex Kirk coming back, I'm a top 25 team to start the season. I got the, one of the best centers in the country. But I didn't recruit because I thought Alex was coming back. And Alex did what was best for Alex Kirk, and that's awesome. You know, he's a local kid that did well. He made it to the pros. He, he trusted us to, to get him there. He trusted us to have a great career here. He could have went anywhere in the country, but he picked our state school. And that's impressive. But I didn't recruit any bigs, and I didn't do anything recruiting-wise because I thought Alex Kirk was coming back. And – 
So it is because Obach is young, but after the time that Alex decided to go to the draft, most of the recruiting was over. So, you know, that's the things you have to deal with, and that's the things with success of your program that I don't mind dealing with. But there's going to be some bumps in the road with this team because, you know, we're missing a heck of a player that we can't replace. On the recruits, um, Dane haven't committed. Seems right, like yeah, he's been here. Have you had a guy before, um, either at Iowa or here, where he, they've been committed, and it seems like two years ago? No, I, I, we haven't had anybody that early. I mean, now we will with our next class. We'll have somebody just as long, but not not like Dane. In that process, then, when you get that early commitment, obviously you're recruiting them at that, that age. I, I understand, but when you get that commitment, any nerves at all? A lot of nerves. Yeah, a lot of nerves because it's the old adage that once they commit to us. The other teams are like, well, now the field's limited. I only have to beat one other group. I only have to beat one team. <laughs> so people don't stop recruiting. People don't start making phone calls. People don't, you know, they don't stop recruiting them. That's that's the bad thing about our business. Uh, we don't do that. That's not our practices. Once a kid commits to another school, we don't we don't do anything. But that's not the case with other schools. And yeah, you're nervous about it. You're really nervous about it. You're nervous about that. You know. So is there a level of you're not sure how much he's been developed? Because as a sophomore in high school when he committed, he's obviously not a D1 ready guy at that point, but you were confident he, he continued to develop. Yeah, because you're taking a gamble on if you if you know what you're doing or not. That's the gamble you take. Now, you don't always – it doesn't always work out for you, but I was willing to take that gamble with him. And you're confident he has developed. Yeah, he's the number one player in Arizona. I mean, it's pretty dang good basketball. I mean, he's – he, sh you know, he's should have been a top. I mean, he's the top hundred player in most cases with most list and all that. But I mean, he's going to be a heck of a player. He's a six seven guard. It's as athletic a kid as I've had. And in Jordan's case, is he a guy that you can see playing off ball at all? Is he a scorer? Yeah, he can score it. But I think he's going to come in here. And, I mean, I just, I mean, I'll just like to have as many good guards as I can that can handle the ball and shoot it and pass it. So I think both those guys will fit. And Anthony's – I think Anthony could be a surprise because he can really score it. I mean, he's like – I think he was fourth, third or fourth in scoring in the big Adidas tournament in Vegas with all those teams there. And that's pretty good competition. He's a pretty good scorer. And with Anthony, the scoring, obviously a big plus. Can he handle the ball? Yeah, he can handle the ball, so he gives you another ball handler. So you basically – all three of those guys can handle the ball. I mean, Dane can really handle the ball for a kid that's six seven. And, you know, plus they're all from winning programs. And that has a lot – I mean, I think that's something that we don't – we take for granted in recruiting. Uh, we, we, really think, we really look at it because I want guys that have been in winning programs and winning traditions and, you know, what's going on. And I think all three of those guys are on winning places. And I think that has a big thing to do. Yeah, we'll start the same way. We'll start the same way. Um, you know, I, I think I'll I think we'll start with Devin and Obach and uh, the Bigs, and then Cullen. If he can play, he'll start. If not, then I'll I'll start Arthur. So if Cullen can't play on Friday, I'll start Arthur in in his place, and then I'll just have to move Hugh back to the point guard spot or on the ball spot. Yeah, I think I think so. I think it'll help. I, I mean, you you guys should know. You guys are big guys, and I'm sure that was something that you guys – like when I played, and this is just kind of off the record, but when I – I mean, not off the record, but all kind of all uh, around about. When I played, I didn't like playing against those little quick guards. They bothered me because of my size. And, and I'm sure you guys didn't like playing against those smaller guys because you couldn't kind of get them or – like Obosh spent – the first two exhibition game kind of missing people because <laughs> they're just getting around him. But hopefully he'll play people normal size and he'll be able to – it'll help him a little bit because it's different. I mean, it's it's very different. So, you know, he's going to get to do that on Friday night. He's going to get to do it on Sunday. And then when we go to Puerto Rico, there's going to be some really good players down there that he gets to play against. My biggest thing with him is recruit. we recruit him. If you go back and look at – at, Coach, at Steve's press conference when we signed this group or when he was signed, you know, he's a he's an athlete, runner, you know, block shots. And I think he's going to do that for us. And I think he'll be able to score on angles. And I think he made some baskets last year that he can make this year if he continues to run the floor and get angles. Coach, same thing, kind of going off that with mm -hmm. JJ. Um, he's been – he's a lot bigger than a lot of the guys you, you face. And he's kind of – Right. 
now that he's playing against bigger guys, you think he's not going to be able to throw his body around as much and get some of those offensive fouls? So. Could happen, yes. Yeah, totally. It's, it's, totally. That's a good answer or a good question. He's got to learn how not to throw his body and make it a big reaction. You know, he's got to – he can't knock guys down and all that, but I like his size. I like what he's done. I think he works extremely hard, um, and I think his his better basketball is to come. But you know, we'll find out because he's going to get thrown in the fire pretty quick. You talked about just throwing out everything at these guys early in practice. Now mm-hmm. this week, is game Friday, game Sunday. What can you learn from just that quick turnaround? Well, I think it's a situation where you know you'll play a game on Friday, and you're going to see a team that's going to play a lot of zone. So you'll have to put a lot of zone packages in, which will work today, but then we'll also work against man stuff today at practice because Fullerton plays man. So I think that the good thing is with all these new guys, with throwing all that stuff at them, we can come back with, you know, we're going to have a game plan for Friday, which is going to be a zone package deal where we're going to run certain things against that. And they could play a little man. And then on Sunday, they're going to play strictly man. So we'll come around with our walkthrough on Saturday and we'll go over, hey, these are the things we're going to concentrate on. So, you know, my biggest thing is they just got to really communicate. And that's what I've talked to them about. They, you know, like I, I, I showed film to a botch yesterday and I, I'm going to show the tape with guys today at three but I, I did some individual film sessions yesterday with Obach and, and the biggest thing with him is like I ask him I go now did you know what we were in and he's like I really didn't know and I go well you have to talk you have to ask if you don't know ask and I think they're trying to find themselves you know with the new group I think they're trying to find that communication and that's why you know you'll see us huddling up a lot more you'll see us doing things communicating wise that they have to do on their own and you know, I was asked a question today at, uh, in the San Juan press conference about what we do for chemistry and all that. And it's it's not new. We've done it for eight years. I take their phones when we have dinners and when we do um, curfew and when we go to bed at night. They don't have their phones or their computers because, like, if we go to Papa Do's or Scalos or, you know, we're going to wherever, Knob Hill Grill, and we're talking and I got my phone all the time, they don't communicate. So we take their phones. And it makes them communicate. So this group is really good off the floor with chemistry and communicating, but they got to get better on the floor, and that's a process. What does Fullerton do offensively? They basically just dribble drive you. They dribble drive you. Um, they play hard. You know, Dietrich was a longtime friend of uh, Lamont's that was with Lamont at Arizona State and re- when they recruited Cullen, and, you know, they play hard. And they move the ball. They dribble drive it. They've got good size. Uh, they're going to play man-to-man defense. Not a lot of pressure. Um, but it'll be a good test for us. Do you, do you like the fact that you're playing two games? In the three well, games? it's kind of – I mean, Jeff, you you guys probably know, with these new rules, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. You can't play before the 14th, and you got to get them in. And, of course, we can't play till like, the end of finals sometimes because we can't play in the middle of finals. So it's hard to get all those games in starting on the 14th. And the only way we could get it in was to play Friday and Sunday and then leave on Tuesday to get all the games that we wanted to get in. I mean, I'd hate to see if we could have got an exempt game in. I just don't know where we place it. So you guys already, as coaches, I know, are preparing for fourth. Have you shown the guys at all? No, we'll show them today what happens with our process, and I don't mind sharing this. What happens with our process, the the game that we played against Adam State, there'll be a personnel sheet up right after the game of the next game, which is Idaho State. And then we'll do personnel today after practice. And then um, Saturday, Friday night we'll play. Then when they come in the locker room, Fullerton will be up in that in our locker room. Those, the personnel stuff will be up. Then we'll go over that. We'll hand them a sheet because it's such a quick turnaround. We'll meet on Saturday and we'll go over what they do. No, because we can't. We've never done that. I just don't think it does you any. I don't think it does you any good because it's a it's a long season. You know, um, we got to make this. You know, thirty games. It's every single game, and that's the way we got to attack it because of our, our our youth and our new newness to our team. And, you know, we don't think ahead. Now, some of the coaches, we're going to work ahead, you know, but we don't talk anything about that stuff ahead of time because, you know, like I'll have – we got guys working ahead on San Juan already because we have to 
but our guy our, our players won't see anything till Saturday on the next opponent. One more Sam, that's, that's a, that's a, is Jordan going? Yeah, he'll go. Okay. He'll I would say this is just me. I, and the only reason why I said December one is because I don't want to be I don't want to be one of those guys that says he's gonna play Friday and then he doesn't play. I don't want to be one of those guys that says Hey, he's going. I can see him playing Boston College, and he doesn't play. I said December one because that gives him a goal where he can get back, and he's not. But if he practices for five practices, I could see him playing Sunday. I don't know that, but I'm just. I mean, I don't see him playing Friday because I don't think he'll get him in. But other than that, I think, you know, he he could possibly play on Sunday. You talked about the post. You, you won't be throwing it into the post this year. Not the same personnel there. If there's uh, if you have an off shooting night, will it uh, will dribble penetration? Be- yeah, we'll be able to dribble it in there and, and hopefully get some fouls. And also, we're able to. One thing we can do that a lot of people can't do is we can post our guards because of our size. So, you know, we can do that if we have to. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.